So recently, I've been challenging myself to make some more passion project videos. One of those has been an unofficial fan-made 3D music video. That's going to come out soon, but in the meantime, I want to take today to talk about some of the useful things I've learned along the way while making that video. So here are five tips for making a 3D music video with Blender. So tip number one, if you're stuck on an environment, use the environment built in add on. You can enable this in the preferences. It comes with all Blender versions. You're going to get this little mountain model here. You can click in the bottom left and use some of these operator presets for different types of environments like this river, for example. I also like to use the sculpting mode in Blender just to shape this environment to my liking. The process gives you a lot more control as opposed to just ripping free assets from places like Sketchfab while still being a faster paced workflow than just modeling everything from scratch. So if you're looking to practice or if you're just stuck on what to make, definitely try this out. There's also other built in Blender add ons like making trees, for example, similar to this. And of course, there are so many useful plugins you can download online as well. Just make sure if you're downloading stuff, you keep yourself safe from viruses and other bad things by using something like a VPN and what better VPN than Nord VPN. Shout out to Nord VPN for sponsoring today's video. I've personally been taking cybersecurity a lot more serious lately, especially with all of these shady emails and phishing scams that I see online. Nord VPN has a threat protection feature, which keeps you safe every time you download a file or click on a link. A lot of the times I'm working in an airport or a cafe while traveling. If you guys are in those situations and you're on that public Wi-Fi network, make sure you're using a VPN because you're at high risk on that public network. With NordVPN, you can encrypt your online traffic, keep your precious data and information safe, and give yourself peace of mind while browsing or while working. If you guys are interested in NordVPN, again, I highly recommend you check it out. You can click my link at the top of the description. That'll give you four months extra on a two-year plan. Again, top of the description for the link that offers risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, number two is small details are important, but keep the bigger picture in mind. So another thing I've been trying to do is working Adobe Substance Painter into my 3D workflow. It's great to push for big ideas and spend hours on tiny details, but you also need to balance that with ways to cut corners and fully produce something. I remember a couple of years ago, the Corridor crew put out a video with Beeple, who if you didn't know, he created a digital render every day for I think 10 years. In that video, he talked a little bit about his workflow, and it's pretty apparent that he uses tons of different shortcuts just to be able to streamline this process. For a lot of those streamlining tips that really depends on you and your own workflow and what you think works best, this could be something as simple as building your own little library of assets to knowing ways to add detail or improve lighting in Photoshop. This more so applies to solo creators. In the working world, there's entire departments handling each of these steps and working as a team. When you're trying to build this jack of all trades skill set, keeping that bigger picture in mind and knowing of ways to cheat the look of something can go a long way. And I've noticed some of these larger solo creators like Beeple or Ian Hubert, for example, they all know these little ways just to save time or get something done quick or cover something up in post, learn some of those little tricks or even just work some of them out for yourself. So number three is learn ways to streamline your animation. For camera animation, I recommend two things. Number one, watch some tutorials on camera constraints. These can really save you a ton of time tracking and following the path of specific Bezier curves, as opposed to painstakingly animating every rotation and movement with keyframes. I also recommend you learn how to use the graph editor. Not only do you get additional control over the keyframes, but you can also add in modifiers to add things like camera shake or repeated movements. This applies to character animation as well. A lot of the time for characters, I'll just use a Mixmo animation or some other free mocap and just modify things to my liking with the graph editor. I've also been experimenting with the AI assisted animation software Cascador, which has been really easy to get the hang of. If you move one part of the rig, the entire body will respond accordingly, which is just really cool. So yeah, learn some of these shortcuts. It's kind of the whole theme of this video, just giving you guys shortcuts so that you're not so intimidated learning 3D for the first time. I think it's little things like this that can just help you get the ball rolling. Number four is use 2D images. So not everything in your 3D software has to be 3D. The images to planes add-on that again comes with Blender can be one of the most useful tools that you have. I like comping photos and plugging the texture into the emission slot so that the background is actually emitting light onto everything else. You can also composite fog, particles, and even objects like large-scale 2D forests, which when parented to the camera look 3D. I talked about this in my last tutorial, and I also added all of these things I'm showing here to my Blender plugin Director 3D, which is made for music video creators. A link to that will be down below if you want to check it out. 
Number five is change your camera settings like you would in real life. So if you've owned a camera or you were ever into photography, you may have looked up ways to make your images more cinematic. Well, those rules still apply to 3D. I really like using the depth of field option for more realism. Now, if you're a beginner, this is by far the most important tip in the video. So you may be thinking, okay, I want this object in focus. So I'm gonna go down to the depth of field, click on my focus object here and select my object. Well, if you do it that way, you may see that this is still very blurry. You're not able to see a lot of these details. If I zoom in here, you can see still not a lot in focus. And the reason for this is that whenever you click and select this focus object here, it's actually locking on to the origin of the object. So if I click on the object, you're gonna see the origin is this yellow dot, and you can see it's in the very center of the model. And this is useful for being able to rotate things. Uh, so for example, if I was to use my 3D cursor and like put it on the ear right here and then click object tab, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now you're going to see everything is out of focus except for the ear. I feel like that's one of those super important tiny things that people who start Blender don't know about. So instead, what I recommend you guys do is you click shift A and you create an empty right here. It doesn't matter which one, we'll go with a plane axis. Empty is gonna pop up where the 3D cursor is. I can rename this empty to my pull focus. Let's go to my camera options down here and set the focus object to my empty pull focus. So now I can just take this empty and put it exactly where I want the focus to be. So I can put it over in the background. I could put it in the foreground. I could animate it just by setting some keyframes here so that it goes from the foreground to the background and get this sort of depth of field pull focus look. So now we have this animation. So this gives you a lot more control and precision. And again, I talked about adding in those small little details, whether you're using something like Substance Painter or you're texturing in Blender. I just threw a little roughness map on here just to show. If you want those small details to show, you really need to make sure that this is perfectly in focus so that you're not losing any of that detail. And you'll see the difference just by moving this back to where it originally was in the origin if I had not change to the empty focus. There's also a lot of room for experimentation with this one. If you just look at music video examples in real life, people are using things like fisheye lenses, crazy motion blur, slow motion, etc. Take note of those real world examples and apply that to your works in 3D so that you can get more creative and organic looks. So that's about it guys. Again, just a little thought processing video here of some things that I think can help you. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to make these sort of larger scale projects. My thinking is if I work on one larger project that takes me a couple weeks to do per month, I can learn new things, which I can again teach back to you guys on this channel while still keeping myself fulfilled, uh, not repeating old information, which I hate to do, and just moving forward and trying to get better every day. So I hope you guys do enjoy. I'm also working on a full Blender bootcamp for video editors because I know a lot of you guys came from my video editing content. Uh, and now I'm starting to kind of experiment and go into 3D and ways to work that into the full video creation process. So I wanna give you guys a full bootcamp course to get you up and running with these 3D tools and teach you all of the basics. Other than that, guys, have a nice day. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss the next one coming out. And I'll talk to you in the next one.